Who? What's going on, Power Pups? And good morning, football fans. Even though this is a wrestling show, uh, I guess congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs for becoming a dynasty, and congratulations to Taylor Swift for becoming a uh, alternative alternative cult member. Uh, welcome to the show. This is a follow-up to a very big premium live event that we had last week where all the champions remained and defended. And you can find out more information by using exclamation point undercard to see who the current champions are. Let's take a look at the card. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Undercard, Season 9, Episode 7, The Follow-Up. And opening up the show today, we've got Abyss versus Toxic Avenger. It's the season of Giants and Monsters continuing because we also have three number one contendership matches here today. And of course, the first will be for the Tag Team Championship uh, number one spot. It's Two live crew, that's Road Dog and R Truth versus Monster Mafia, that's Ethan Page and Josh Alexander. Then we've got Roxy Laveau versus Ivory. Following up, we've got Dalton Castle versus Kevin Nash. The party peacock is back again. And we've got the number one contender for the women's championship, Abaddon versus Lady Frost. The winner, of course, will face current women's champion awesome kong next week at the halftime show and then we've got a huge matchup mojo rowley is 2-0 and going up against godzilla and this match could have future implications for the undercard championship so this is definitely one to keep an eye on and of course in our main event today it's Geralt versus Braun Strowman, number one contender, winner will face the big show in the main event for the title next week. And interestingly enough, this is Braun Strowman's first main event since the finale of season one, where he did have a match against Kratos. That's a huge throwback to season one, but let's focus on season nine, shall we? Abyss on the left, Toxic Avenger on the right, based on their looks. I hope I didn't have to explain that to you. Opening up the show, we've got a fire contest and a tackle. Toxic Avenger striking first here early into the corner we go. Abyss going to fight out of it and a test of strength. And there he goes, the monster, Abyss. How's he going to deal with the radioactive superpowers of Toxie? Off the ropes, but no, wait a minute. Too early for something there. Taking control, elbows him down, gets kicked off. Counters quickly. And just Beal tosses him out of the way. We've talked about the relationship between the referee, Mick Foley, and uh, Abyss, but it seems like the referee has been impartial and pretty uh, focused on just making the right calls and making the counts when they matter. So it's good to finally have an even and good referee in Season 9. And there's a toss away this time by Toxic Avenger, Traumaville's number one star here in the undercard, battling to open the show. Completely simulated action off the ropes. Oh, was he going to follow up? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Hammer fist to the side of the head, and there's the knuckle sandwich for you, and one for you, and back and forth we go. Welcome to the show. Only on Mondays, here live on Twitch, and later posted on YouTube, and you can catch the entire series of the undercard going all the way back to season one which was uh, obviously a bumpy and sloppy road and i wasn't really sure what the show was going to become i was just goofing off 
in Fire Pro and having fun back then, but uh, over the seasons, obviously, it's become more formatted, more controlled, more about the wins, and they both went for a tackle at the same time, but did not collide here almost the first five minutes, and there's a chair to your head. All weapons are legal, and so is an eye poke. Everything goes, and of course, Abyss, no stranger to weapons. Very comfortable with a, a chair or a barbed wire bat in his hand, and there's just a kick to the ass from Toxic Avenger to Abyss. And another elbow, keeping him down. Trying to get control of this match. As right now, it seems like a stalemate. This ain't a chessboard, ladies and gentlemen. This is a wrestling match. Oh, chop to the face. And here we go, multiple clotheslines. Sandwiching them in the corner. Oh. Devastation there. Dragon screw. Wait, a trip up and a toss. Into the corner. Didn't know if he got all of that one. Throws him outside of the ring, and this is where... The violence continues. A baseball bat in the hands of Toxic Avenger. And now Lucille is on the floor. All the weapons are in play. Into the barricade goes Abyss. No disqualification. No count out. But the pinfalls must happen inside of the ring. This isn't a street fight. This is just normal rules here in the undercard. This is what it's all about. Throws him into the side of the ring. Chops him in the head. Grabs another chair. This time, pokes him in the ribs with it. That's the hard edge of a steel chair. Nothing fake about that. And again, just piling up yeah. the weapons on the outside. And yeah. there you go. Right into the audience is Abyss. That's a big man getting tossed into the crowd from behind. Just fighting in the corner here on the outside. Pretty even ground, though. And a taunt from Toxic Avenger. Cat and Mouse rolls back in. Oh no, Toxic Drop to Toxic Avenger. That's a, the shock treatment there by Abyss. That's a big signature move. And now a chokehold on the outside. The submission won't count unless it's critical. A critical submission could lead into an injury, and an injury at this point in the season would set you way far back, and that's the last thing you want here, going towards the halfway point, or as I think I might actually call it the halftime show. That would be funny. Low blow. It's my show. You can't tell me what to do. Again, poked by the chair and choked. Poked and choked. Can we get inside the ring, boys? There's about 100,000 weapons on the outside, and Abyss just got tossed across the canvas. Lock up, reversal. Oh no! The lariat, the splash, the combo, the first fall of the match, and a kick out of two. Choke slam, down you go. Taking his time. I they expected a follow-up. Big boot. Abyss looking for potentially the black hole slam. But uh, opted to go for a different counter there with the boot. And now on the shoulders of Toxic Avenger. Getting spun around. Sent Give all up. the way back to the penitentiary. Or I guess the insane asylum. Wherever the hell he was from. Oh boy. Joseph yeah. Park with the pile driver. And Toxic Avenger got busted open with that steel chair pile driver. Gets up wobbly. And he's going to do it two times in a row. Damn it. Damn you, Abyss. Damn you. 13 minutes and Avenger is down and bloodied. But this yeah. match is yet to be called for a finish. Rope break off of the airplane spin. And again, no, 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 three yeah. times! And that should be it. But Abyss might be focused on punishment and pain instead of winning the damn match. Oh, Brain Buster in the corner. Toxie, slow recovery. 
And again, to the outside. These guys want a hardcore brawl. This is not the way to do it. This is not the way to win. He won't stop. He's still spinning. Oh my God! That was a, he put an extra spin on that one. And again, he's just oh backbreaker. I thought he was gonna do it again. Oh my God! Backbreaker again. They're spamming moves. They're spamming it. Oh, low blow there. Choke slam on the outside. Might have landed on a weapon. Every time you land on a chair, it's going to do extra damage. Modified neck breaker. Toxic. Toxic Avenger still bleeding. He fell into a vat of strange chemicals and became the hero that we all needed. But he's going up against the Monster Abyss. And a spinning punch knocks down Abyss, followed by the fist drop. And now the signature moves are coming out for Toxie. Oh boy! Welcome to Traumaville! Welcome to Traumaville! One, two, the finisher gets it! That's how you end a match, dude. Just get in there, hit your finisher, and get out. Great ending for Toxic Avenger. And I don't think we've even seen Abyss actually land that black hole slam, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, next up is the number one contender for the Tag Team Championship. It's two live crew versus Monster Mafia. Winners of this match will face A-Train and Nathan Jones next week at the halftime show for the belt. And if you weren't here next week, Fight. the Tag Team Championship was defended in a tornado tag match where everybody was in the ring and they all agreed to it. And it was pretty much a squash match. And uh, the big monsters, A-Train and Nathan Jones, the current champions, are just so dominant. They're undefeated. And I don't know if it's even possible to defeat a team that's so huge. But one of these teams right here is going to keep that dream in mind, but right now they have to focus on this match. Kind of a, a road dog Give punch up. there, and uh, I guess a, a speed bump. A bump in the road for road dog. You know what I'm saying? As Ethan Page backs off, maybe thought about making the tag. He's in his own corner. That's where you want to be. Especially early on, uh, there was an attempt of a roll-up, but the ropes were right there, and it's too early in the match. First two minutes tag to Josh Alexander, and then I poke and Road Dog with a hip toss, and a fireman's carry just showing these young guys how it's done. The veteran team of R-Truth and Road Dog, two live crew, arm drag to R-Truth, and there's no gimmicks here. There's no comedy here. This is just straight business, and that's a punch to the face and a flying leg drop by R-Truth. R-Truth is so quick, and he used to actually call himself K-Quick, and he, he rhymes fast, and he raps even faster, or something. Oh boy, there it was, lie detector, and the dance, hey, hey there we go, <laughs> that's what we like to see, multiple time tag team champion is R-Truth, and Looking for an opportunity to re-hold or reclaim those tag team championships. Of course, yeah. as I mentioned, that uh, two live crew were the first champions of season nine, and definitely want a, another chance against the current champions. But Monster Mafia has to figure out a way to deal with these veterans right now. Ethan Page struggling as he chases them to the wrong side of the ring and gets kicked in the head for it. And now Road Dog 
gonna take his hands and uh, just totally control Ethan Page in the center of the ring while Josh Alexander can do nothing but watch from a distance. Those da those are dangerous strikes. Our, our Road Dog with the rights and the lefts and those snap jabs, the old fashioned snap jabs. Snap jabs and then a tag. Uh, both members of Monster Mafia getting knocked down there. Number one contender match here. And oh baby, the shaky knee. Signature knee drop by Road Dog and Alexander just kind of desperate to slow this one down. Bulldog from Road Dog. The D O double G. Yo. <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Down and out. Well, your ass better call somebody. Tag mate to our truth. And now Josh Alexander is in a bad position as this match is kind of running away from Monster Mafia. Two live crew. Oh boy, wait a minute. That could be the moment they needed that breakaway and that tag, hot tag to Ethan Page. Suplex in the center. Ethan Page now with an opportunity to follow up, but our truth just stepping away, dancing away. Kick to the face. Ethan Page has got to do some damage here. Counter off the ropes. Oh, jumping lariat and a flying leg drop. Our truth is just one step ahead of Ethan Page here. Shoulder breaker. And this is why they were the champions before. They're just so efficient inside of the ring. And everybody, you know, talks about how they're great on the microphone and how they, they're great at comedy bits. But it seems like Two Live Crew is here for serious business. DDT by Ethan Page. Our truth got up quickly. Don't want to stay on the ground too long. Enziguri kicked to the side of the head. Ten and a half minutes gone in this tag match. Another tag made. This time Road Dog is the legal man. Oh, just saved his partner from getting slammed or something. Elbow. And now a tag to Josh Alexander. And the double team. Powerbomb into a neck breaker. Leg drop to follow up. And Alexander is still in the ring here. As the legal man. So that was just an extra hit for Ethan Page in the roll up. That schoolboy leading to a two count in the center of the ring. Headlock punches. Kick to the face. And again two in a row. Shin breaker. Working on the legs. Anything you can do to slow down this team. And Alexander... Uh, with a technical background, obviously knows how to tear apart your ligaments. Oh, low blow from behind. Road Dog ain't playing no games, son. Oh, buddy. <laughs> what's up? People over there, what's up? Oh, the pay dirt. Little Jimmy. One, two. Oh, Ethan Page just got there for the breakup at the last millisecond, but I feel like that was going to be it. And ho, oh, Daddy Road Dog with the flip, flop, and fly, and now Alexander yeah. with the modified Dude Buster. One, two, and a kick out. Or a breakup. Either way, double move. DDT and a stunner. Cover. Ethan Page is groggy. Has to get back to his corner. Oh, that was the worst time to be shaken up and confused. What an ending. The double move. But it seems like Ethan Page was more effective or more affected either way. Uh, two Live Crew will get another shot at the titles next week against A-Train.
and Nathan Jones. That felt pretty one-sided, I gotta be honest. I mean, when you're focused with a goal in mind, that can really help. Uh, so let's continue with some motivation in the women's department. Of course, we do have a fully fleshed out women's division here. And Roxy Laveau versus Ivory, I think, is a pretty big matchup. Fight. And of course, this one could have future implications as well. And uh, Powerbomb shut down quickly off of the bell. I mean, they're two high ranked women, and they both definitely deserve a spot against Awesome Kong, but they're going to have to wait for the other ladies later on as we do have a number one contendership match later on. The, the number one contenders, Abaddon versus Lady Frost, Give will up. be later in the show, so keep your eyes out for that one. Test of strength here, though. Roxy and Ivory pretty even on the strength department, it seems, but the elbows, uh, and that's just the, the experience of Ivory. Ivory, we've talked about it. She's a Hall of Famer. She's been wrestling for... 20 plus years gets knocked down by the elbow but Roxy Laveau is always playing mind games always doing some tricks and uh, some crazy magic she's the voodoo queen and how will that play into this match we, we will have to just watch it see scoop slam by Ivory from behind she's wearing a tie to the ring pure business and she's trying to censor all this dark magic from our eyeballs so thank you for that ivory up top oh flipped right onto her and she got all of it i think her karana now ivory looking strong here roxy laveau got up groggy out of the corner though scoop slam stomps on the midsection dodges a fist and now, chops versus elbows. Exchange of blows. Down goes Ivory. Modified neck breaker. I like that. Drop kick to the back of the head. Focusing on the same section, and that's how you wear down a neck, but she ran right into a DDT. Ah. Ivory with the power bomb. Almost threw her into the ropes there. Oh, the jumping axe kick. Stepped on her own leg and delivered that kick to the back of the neck. And she's going to do it again. That looks painful. And Roxy's got to turn this one around quickly. And she does there with another neck breaker. Still on the ground is Ivory recovering very slowly. Multiple elbows, though. <laughs> and a little taunt. Okay. <laughs> That's an old school taunt. Powerbomb from Ivory. And there's the leg lock. And Give she up. has won a match before in Season 9 with Give this up. leg lock. Just twisting at the ankle there, too. <gasps> Powerbomb again. Leg lock again. The Ivory up. knows what she's doing. Give up. Give and up. she's not going to slow down. Give up. She wants to halt all the funny business. No questions asked. Running into the knee. <gasps> Power bomb. Oh boy. Someone's going to get up. sent to the office. Give up. Give up. This is employee abuse or something. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, to me, in my mind, right to censor was very similar to the corporation. But I get that there was a difference. And uh, there you go. Another axe kick. Roxy Laveau. 
struggling here. DDT against Ivory, and I, I think it's very clear to me that Ivory is just super focused right now. Leg lock. She might be touching the ropes, though. Good call by referee Mick Foley. And a power bomb. I've lost count of how many times Ivory has done Give this. Up. This is Give turning up. into a one-way street. Up. And Roxy Laveau cannot turn around. <laughs> Desperation. Photo drop. The finisher. She had to. She had no other choice, but the ropes were there. Oh, no. Crossface. Crossface by Give Roxy. Up. Give up. Ivory somehow slipped out of the crossface, but she ran right back into it. Hold on. The ropes were there. And so is the X kick again. Just spamming these moves over and over until something works. And Roxy has <laughs> taken so much damage in this match, but the voodoo drop is going to do it. Unless Ivory can kick out of one of the most devastating finishers, and she does. Took up half the classic 2.9 Fire Pro count. We got a match now, boys. It's all fun and games until somebody hits that voodoo drop and the Mahistral pin will not work for Ivory either as the ropes are there. They got to get out of this corner. Because these pinfalls aren't going to count if you're touching the ropes. And that's pretty much one of the only rules keeping uh, things fair and even here in the undercard. Multiple rope breaks in a row and another voodoo drop, a third one. But the ropes again, this is bad positioning for Roxy Laveau. That might have been her chance to win the match. Crossface. Break. Rope break. Cover. One, Too much damage two, done? Three. Yes. I would call that an awkward finish, but it seemed like Ivory completely dominated the match, and then Roxy was like, well, I have to hit my finisher, and she did, but it just wasn't at the right place in the ring to get that three count that she desperately needed almost exactly, I think that was exactly 13 minutes Ivory comes away with the win. <clears throat> it's back-to-back -back Dalton Castle matches as we saw him last week and we're seeing him again now. The party never stops when the Peacock is in town, but he's going up against the very tall and dangerous NWO member and Twitter's least favorite wrestler of the week, Kevin Nash. Fight. And just for anybody that uh, thinks I like Kevin Nash, you're very wrong. I actually think he sucks. He's a horrible wrestler and it, probably a worse person. But he's here in the undercard and this is booked, uh, you know, weeks and months ahead. So current events aside, this match will happen here right now. And Dalton Castle... Uh, Outsized, but goes for the drop toe hold. That's a smart way to deal with a larger man. Into the corner goes Kevin Nash. Coming out. Wolf pack red. Hammer to the fit. Hammer to the back. That big <laughs> fist of Kevin Nash. And the uh, big elbow as well. Everything Kevin Nash does is big. That's why they call him Big Sexy. Although I don't know who thinks he's sexy. Chop to the chest. Dalton Castle getting elbow down and stomped on. I mean, we've had a few uh, controversial wrestlers on the show, and I don't think that trend is ever going to change. I, I don't like do it on purpose. I just, uh, you know, we're focusing on the wrestling, and that's what I care about. Kick to the midsection, down goes Nash. And Dalton Castle, I think, is still looking for his first victory of Season 9. 
as he lost to Heidenreich last week and now has to face another big red giant as Kevin Nash delivered an elbow to his chest there on the ground. Hammer fist to the back. Off the ropes. Oh, went for a clothesline but ducked it. And now Dalton had the opportunity but could not follow it up. Took a knee to the gut and a sidewalk slam. The main event mafia, bro. Didn't they have... I feel like they had a feud with Mick Foley. So Kevin Nash and Mick Foley have probably had a, a match together at some point. I might have mentioned that last time that Kevin Nash was in the ring. But everything is canon here in the undercard. I always say that. And real life imitates oh, art. God. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. Yeah. And a gourd buster in the center of the ring there by Dalton Castle. Impressive show of strength. I mean, Dalton Castle, although he's one of the smaller guys on the roster, isn't exactly a small man. He's just small in comparison to everybody else in the season of Give Giants up. and Monsters. So Dalton yeah. Castle is here because he's got a giant ego. But I don't think anybody's ego is bigger than Kevin Nash as he just got punched yeah. in the face and a uh, gourd buster again. I mean, he is uh, 5'11", yeah. two, 217, so he's definitely on the smaller side of the scale. And this could be a jackknife reversal. Wait, One. cover on the back. Choke slam! Oh, 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 oh God! What a counter to a choke slam! Nothing like a kick in the balls to wake you up on a Monday morning, bro. Went for the jackknife again, oh. got countered again, and Dalton Castle has that jackknife scouted. I mean, you have to when you're going up against Kevin Nash. You know it's his most dangerous weapon, and you definitely want to avoid it here, as uh, we're almost. Or actually, we are over half an hour into the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Undercard, Season 9, Episode 7, The Follow-Up. And we're following up a premium live event, but we're also building up to the halfway point of Season 9 already, which is kind of crazy. It always blows my mind how much work I put into these shows and then how fast the season goes by. Because in my mind, I'm like, oh, right, oh, an episode a week what? is going to take a while. And it's just, we're having too much fun. Jackknife! Powerbomb! But his foot is on the ropes! And again, the same story from the last match. Those finishers, bang, bang. the damage is effective. Bangarang! But it doesn't matter if the ropes are there. And Dalton Castle has to make what? sure Kevin Nash is away from the ropes, but he can't. Is it deja vu? Or are they just not aware of their in-ring positioning? Because that, that could have been the end of the match for both guys. And now we're back to square one, even footing. Sledgehammer. Dalton with the low blow. Off the ropes is Castle with the elbow to the back. But Kevin Nash recovered first. And now you're going to pay for it. Choking him, slamming him down to the canvas, following it up with a leg drop. Good combo there by Kevin Nash and the big boot. The big boot for boot. And the elbow for the fist. And down goes Dalton Castle. But he gets back up and delivers one of his own. Punch to the midsection. Kevin Nash getting caught by the pump handle. And a gut wrench. Side to side we go. The longer this match goes, the better it will favor the party peacock. But he ran into the what? big time power bomb. Jackknife power bomb. That's got to be it. Unless he kicks out. That was a huge kick out by Dalton Castle. And now the bangerang, his own finisher. And this time it'll be up to Kevin Nash to kick out at two. And he does. Finisher for finisher, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to the undercard, the Exploder. Signature move there by the party peacock. Kevin Nash wants to crash this party. And the fans are dancing in the stands. Give up. Give up. Taylor Swift is up in the box. <laughs> she might be dating Ke Kevin Nash. I don't know. <laughs> Stalling suplex. Blood rushing down to your head as you get slammed on your back. Big move for big move. And Kevin Nash cannot continue the combo. Yeah. Runs into the Huracarana. Dalton Castle pulling him away from the ropes. Maybe they are listening to me. Elbow. Both guys exhausted. 15 minutes into this match. They've both delivered their finishers twice apiece. And they're just tired. This is going slow. Big boot. Kevin Ash might be hurt. Yeah. Oh, Exploder. Dalton, can he follow it up? No, he runs back into another suplex. Big boot, turns him upside down. Dalton gets up quickly, but runs into a gut wrench. And Kevin Nash is just moving around the ring at zero miles per hour right now. Dalton is wobbly though. Elbow. Bang, bang. And the bangerang in the center. That's got to be it. Go, kid. Get your first victory of season nine. One, One two, two. Three. Oh, boy. Not only is that his first win, that's going to shake up the whole ranking system. And you can check uh, in on that in the Discord where the winds actually matter as they propel you forward up the rankings hopefully to a number one contender spot and speaking of number one contenders it's abaddon versus lady frost in a number one contender match for the women's championship and that means that the winner of this match of course will face awesome kong next week and awesome kong currently undefeated but her last match i will mention last week she was close she was close to losing closer than we've ever seen her lose but she still came out victorious can one of these women potentially undo that or end the streak of awesome kong We'll have to find out next week, but right now we're going to find out who going to win. Abaddon vs. Lady Frost, number one contender. Fight. And I think this is the first match of Season 9 that could potentially happen in real life. As both women are under the AEW circuit right now, I mean... Lady Frost was on TV a lot more recently, and Abaddon had, like, a contender run, so they, they could run into each other, and that would be, again, life imitating art, or maybe Tony uh, is watching the show, I don't, I don't know. Hey, take my ideas, man. I'm bo I've been booking this shit for nine seasons, and uh, it's been pretty successful so far technical start there between these two and Abaddon oh running sister Abigail almost in the first minute of the match snap suplex Lady Frost wants to get the crowd behind her so she can maybe shake off the jitters and uh, not worry about the mind games that Abaddon will play the living dead girl Abaddon some sort of zombie as they are here to become 
women's champion, but have to get through this match first, obviously. And there's an elbow to the face, knocks her down. Lady Frost gets her with an elbow, and now look at this. Oh! Stretching backwards. Nice submission there. Elbow for elbow. That's what we like to see. Abaddon trying to get something going, but got caught by the wrist again. Here we go. Who is better at technical wrestling? I would say uh, Lady Frost on that front, but I mean, Abaddon has a lot of power behind everything she does. Lady Frost it's a big competitor as well. They're, they're pretty even. So I think that this is a big opportunity for both women not to just showcase what they can do, but obviously to become number one contender. Outside we go. Five minutes into the match and a snap suplex onto the outside. There's very thin padding, nothing but concrete underneath. And uh, obviously we've got weapons stocked underneath the ring for anybody to use. But Abaddon going to... I think she's choking her. I can't really tell what's happening behind the barricade. But usually she goes for a, like a forearm choke there on the ground. And a nice elbow to the spine. Oh, short arm lariat right in front of the crowd. Abaddon going down. Kick to her head. Oh, huge backdrop. Lady Frost back in the ring, taunting. And down you go. Don't get overconfident. Especially up against somebody like Abaddon. Just drop kicked her all the way outside of the ring, though. And now Abaddon with a steel chair. Oh! She ran into that lucha flip. I can't believe that caught her. Drop kick again. Lady Frost. With an onslaught of offense. Kick to the head. Knocks down Abaddon. And Abaddon's in trouble here. She just got slammed down on the chair. You gotta block those forearms. I, I would get back into the ring if I were Abaddon. Create some space. Do something. Get away from this. Because it's not looking good. In and out. Face slam. Abaddon's finisher on the outside. That could change the pace of the match. But it seems like Lady Frost did not get slowed down at all. She's very tough. Now back into the ring. But look what's staring across the ring from you. Look. Look at what is staring at you. It is Abaddon. She creeps me out. Oh my god, Widow's Peak! Oh, from the Book of Victoria, another Hall of Famer. One, two, and a kick out there by Lady Frost. Lady Frost has just so much toughness and tenacity and will not stop until this one is over. She will fight until the bell rings. Hook of the leg. Abaddon rolls the shoulder up. Full Nelson slam. Down you go. Trying to regain some momentum in this one. Abaddon gets taken down. Lady Frost looking good, but got caught, by, got caught by the cutter. Caught by the cutter. And now a cover. And that's a tongue twister, but a kick out. As Abaddon is still in this one. She's still alive, or I guess I should say undead. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> Mick Foley. Counting for a two. Abaddon with a hurricanrana. Again, back to back. 
And another Widow's Peak. That's a lot of damage to the neck. But Lady Frost almost no-sold it. Ran into a DDT, and now it's looking like this one might be going towards Abaddon. It's a back and forth. We're taking turns here. Lady Frost had a huge boost of offense, and now it's all Abaddon. Pele misses wildly. So does the spear. And the Samoan drop outside the ring. Maybe rolling for safety. Just trying to stay away. Taunting. Abaddon runs into the twisting neck breaker. And that's going to be a cover. And maybe... Oh, no. Samoan drop. Trying to cool things down here is Lady Frost. But she might like it cold. Abaddon with a big slam. Spring is coming early, she says. Or, well, that's what Punxsutawney Phil said. Spinning neckbreaker. Signature move there by Lady Frost. Into the pinfall. Looking for one of these to become number one contender and face Awesome Kong next week. One, two. It could go either way at this point, I think. DDT, this is, this is becoming more and more even. Spear! Signature Spear! Misses the uppercut. And this exchange of blows could determine the match here. Lariat. Headbutt. These ladies are crazy. Tackle. It's a jackal. It's a spinning side slam. It's Abaddon hitting a signature move. 17 and 15 seconds. 17 minutes, I should say. Spear! Right into the ropes. And she's crawling like a freak. Was that... Was that just for me? Why did she do that? <laughs> she should have went for the cover. And she's too busy staying in character. Ooh, yeah. Spinning neck breaker. Lady Frost with a chance now. But no! Oh my gosh. This might be one of the wackiest matches we've seen in a long time. I, I thought this was over like... 10 minutes ago. I thought Lady Frost had it in the bag, but she got slammed down by the finisher. Her... One, two. No? Oh my gosh. I thought her foot was on the ropes. Referee disagreed. Either way, she kicked that at two, so it doesn't matter. Elbows. One, sitting on her. Two, three. Oh! <laughs> the extra weight of her entire body just kept Abaddon from kicking out there at the end and Lady Frost with a huge lead here in the rankings now will be going up against Awesome Kong next week that's cool get it cool because her name's Lady Frost anyway next up we have a really important match it's Mojo Rowley who is undefeated, which is crazy. I mean, I put him in here, and I never know which way it's going to go with these crazy characters, these uh, mid-carters, I would say. I'm not trying to insult him. I don't want him to be mad at me, but his best friend Gronkowski did miss a field goal for like a million dollars or something. So Mojo Rally is probably in a bad mood going up against Godzilla, and this one could determine who's next in line after the number one contendership match, of course, which is the main event today. But first, we got to do this, and this could shape the future of Season 9. Fight. Of course, former champion Godzilla wants 
another shot against Big Show or pretty much anybody. He'll fight anybody, we know that, but we saw it before as from behind, Mojo with a big sledgehammer to the back. We saw before uh, Godzilla got knocked out by the Big Show and it has been on an absolute rampage through the roster to get back into a position of power and Mojo Rowley in trouble against Godzilla early on. Off the ropes. No, nothing there for you. Nothing to follow up. Mojo Rowley, former football player. Current uh, commentator. Not me, but he's... What is he on? He's on ESPN or something. I don't know. I don't watch sports. Besides wrestling and the Super Bowl. That's it. In the corner. Changing positions. And now a tornado kick with the tail. He's got that tail whip. I think Godzilla might have cut his tail for Season 9 just to make it more efficient. But it'll grow back. He's a lizard. And here comes a spear! But Mojo Rowley sidestepped him. He knows how to move. We'll give him that. We'll give Mojo Rowley some credit. He is undefeated. He has earned this position in the roster. And uh, imagine, imagine Mojo Rowley as undercard champion. That wouldn't be the craziest thing. I mean, we've had some crazy champions before. It would just be out of left field. And uh, we ain't talking baseball, even though Godzilla did once fight inside the Fenway Stadium. Which means technically, the Boston boys. Awkward coll collision here. Let's focus on the match now. Enough for my dumb jokes, I'm sorry. Elbow, and now he's just going to stomp on his opponent. There's classic Godzilla with the roar. Blocking those strikes from Godzilla. You do not want Godzilla to get any headway in this match. Five oh my god. Five. Twisting rock bottom. If you smell what Godzilla is cooking with his atomic breath. And there's an atomic leg drop for you. And this might be a last ride for Mojo Rally down to the canvas from the sky. And oh god, just both legs coming down onto your balls. Center of the ring takes him down. Godzilla. Again with that twisting rock bottom. He wants Mojo to get back up. And he did. And Mojo now taking that chance to strike back with the suplex. Ah, went for it again. It didn't work out that time. Outside you go. And Godzilla is chasing you down. You better run. Get in a taxi and drive away because Godzilla is stomping through the streets. And this is The Undercard, Season 9, Episode 7, The Follow-Up. Last ride on the outside! This is going to be so much damage! Oh my god, ow. That hurt me. <laughs> Spear misses. Mojo, he's got to use his quickness. He's got to use that footwork. He's got to do anything he can to overcome the odds even though Mojo is undefeated I would say this this is obviously his toughest challenge so far as Godzilla has him locked down in the center and there's a tornado kick to the back of the head down goes Rowley oh jumping suplex that sent an earthquake through his whole body one two and just like Lady Frost, Godzilla was sitting on top of his opponent, but Give only up. a 2.9 count. Give and up. now Godzilla taking a Give piece up. out of Mojo Rally, just biting him. Mojo, bleeding. That cannot slow you down. You can't be afraid of the sight of your own blood, but some people are. I hope you're not hemophobic. Uh-oh, awkward collision into a gut wrench. Ten minutes gone. 
Mojo can just not capitalize. He he barely able to follow up here. Here on the follow up. Godzilla taunting. Atomic breath! The finisher by Godzilla. But the ropes are there for Mojo. Just to survive for a few more seconds. Runs into an elbow but blocks it. And now a counter by Godzilla with the boot. Foot meets face. And Godzilla defeats man. But oh, he canceled out the fire. Mojo dodged himself. And avoided, uh, he avoided being burned, but he got tossed away anyway. Here comes Godzilla, atomic leg drop. Oh, don't stand in place against Godzilla. The atomic breath, Mojo, is done for. He got cooked, literally. And Godzilla could be looking in the direction of whoever the champion might be in the future. Well, almost an hour into the show, and we've made it to our main event. This is the number one contender match for the undercard champion. Whoever wins this match will face the big show at the halfway point. That is episode eight. That's next week. Will it be Geralt of Rivia or will it be Braun Strowman? We're going to find out right here. It is Monster Hunter versus Monster Among Men. And wow, just starting off the match by tossing over Braun Strowman, who is an absolute monster. <laughs> I mean, if you look up the word monster in the dictionary, Braun Strowman's picture is there. But Geralt, this is what he does for a Geralt. living. And he's not going to be scared of the size of Strowman. He's fought monsters and dragons and all kinds of crazy things before. Mythical beasts, you name it. Geralt's fought and killed it. The question is, how does Geralt fare in another main event position? Where last time he was not successful. This could be the end for Geralt's run here in the undercard. And I, I don't mean like his career, but I mean... He might not get back into a number one spot. It's a yeah. rough road when you get knocked down a peg because you have to deal with all these other hungry competitors. That's why the winning and losing is important. Wow. And the roster and the rankings really do matter here in the undercard. It's, it's very stiff competition. And we just saw in the last match, like, Godzilla is in the waiting room. So you got to watch out. And there's a drop kick from Braun Strowman all the way across the ring to the face of Geralt, who got back to his feet. Dragon screw leg whip. And now Geralt trying to take down the giant tree. That is Braun Strowman with a sidewalk slam. He goes, and here it comes again. The dangerous drop kick. Strowman. The strong man. Literally, one of the strongest men on the planet. But this isn't, this isn't just a normal person he's fighting. This is Geralt. Extra tough. <coughs> immune to emotion. And that might help him here. Those mutagens might make him uh, focus better. Strike battle. Chopping the chest of Strowman is like hitting your hand against a wall, though. Five minutes gone. And Geralt is going to have to do something special in this match. I, I really, I don't want to seem like this is one-sided, but I mean, 
DDT. Anything's possible in the world of wrestling. Uh-oh. Down you go. Big time choke slam and now forearms. Slamming into the face of Geralt as he's on the ground. Welcome to the hour point. Welcome to my PowerPoint presentation on how to take apart an arm. And Geralt with the technical skills and the cattle mutilation. Cattle mutilation locked in there. Submission applied by Geralt and we've seen. Oh no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It might be all over. Running power slam. The finisher by Braun Strowman. One, two. Oh boy. I was going to say, we've seen Geralt use uh, submission techniques here in Season 9. That's a really great way to deal with a larger opponent. It doesn't matter how big you are if your joints are being manipulated the wrong way. You bend an arm, you break an arm, and that's definitely going to slow down your opponent no matter who they are. Uh-oh, big tackle. Down goes Geralt. Finish. Braun Strowman calling for a finish. Maybe not gonna get it though. Oh, choke slam! Down goes Geralt. And the elevated choke. The elevated triangle choke. Give up. This is how Give Strowman up. became. Give up. Or I guess this is how Give Strowman up. got to this match as he beat uh, Lance Archer with that move. And now Whoa. Geralt with a desperation cover. Kick out by Strowman. You gotta do more than just surprise Strowman. You actually have to beat him. And there's an elbow to the shoulder as Geralt looking to separate bones from flesh or something. Break the break the arm. Go up top. <laughs> Diving on him. Frog splash, but he missed. Strowman got up at the last second. That was a huge risk for Geralt to take, and it did not pay off. Chopping him off the ropes. Here comes Strowman with a tackle. The train is on its way, and that's the Stroman Express. Cover. One. Referee two. McFoley with a two and a half count. And now Geralt with an up. arm lock. Give up. Just trying to do anything to turn this one to his side. Get back into this match and hopefully face the big show next week. Finish. Running power slam down into the corner goes Geralt, planted into the canvas by a huge one, finisher. Two. Second one of the match is not going to do it as Geralt kicked out at two and a half. The hit, uh, surprise pin. One, two. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Face first. Cover. Break. Geralt's hair was on the ropes. Saved by a hair. Oh, yeah. wait a minute! The Griffin Trap! The Griffin Trap submission! Can Strowman escape? Oh, just barely dead, but that could have been the end. And Geralt's yeah. got it again! Geralt! Geralt! Another video game character looking to become champion. Just like Kratos and Kiryu before him. But now Strowman trying to choke the life out of Geralt. This is turning into a submission battle, which... I did not expect, but whatever they have to do to defeat each other, choke slam in the main event. Oh my gosh. Geralt rolling arm bar. Juju Katani arm bar. Give up. Working on that arm all match long, and Strowman is just too damn strong. That rhymed, and I didn't mean it to. Look at the military press. Good God. He just tossed a man across the ring. One. Geralt has to get out, and he does. Use Quinn. Fisherman suplex into the ropes. And again, this time, no ropes in sight. Geralt could become number one contender. Oh, this match is fucking nuts. Hold on to your seatbelts, kids. I hope they're buckled in. Griffin yeah. trap. Griffin trap. Could be a submission. Could be the end, but they fall down. 
Has Geralt expended all his weapons? Wait, he's stealing Strowman's move! Technically, that's a stolen finisher. And the fire! Igni! The magic spell of fire breath. This match has been in flames. Super kick. Down goes Strowman. The monster of Hmong men is down. The monster of men is down. Rolling armbar. But the ropes are there. Strowman, his long legs reaching out to touch the ropes in the corner. These guys have done everything in their playbook. But the Super Bowl might go to the winner. Braun Strowman. Number one contender. The final choke. Geralt just couldn't breathe. And if you can't breathe, you cannot continue. And that means next week, we know who will be facing who. But first, let's take a quick recap of the show here today, ladies and gentlemen. It was Toxic Avenger. Defeating Abyss, and I think it was a pretty good match to open up the show. Then we had the number one contender match for the Tag Team Champion. It's going to be two live crew facing A-Train and Nathan Jones next week for the belts. Ivory defeated Roxy Laveau. Dalton Castle got a big first victory of Season 9 over Kevin Nash. Then we had our number one contender match for the Women's Championship as Lady Frost is number one after she defeated Abaddon in a very good back-and-forth women's match. But uh, Lady Frost versus Awesome Kong next week. And then Godzilla moving up in the ranks. That's dangerous for everyone. And I think we know uh, that he, he'll be having a rematch. I'm pretty sure going into his next match based on the roster and the rankings. But in our main event, Braun Strowman and Geralt of Rivia had a uh, crazy matchup and a bunch of submissions were applied, but it came down to that elevated triangle choke as Strowman used his height advantage to choke out Geralt and become number one contender, which means Braun Strowman will take on the big show. On episode 8 of season 9 at the halfway point, ladies and gentlemen, tune in next week to see a very special 8 match long match or show. 8 matches, 1 show, a very special halfway point of season 9 premium live event, all the titles on the line, and some great big matchups as well. Don't miss it. You're not going to want to miss it, because if you're missing out, you're missing out. And I really mean that. 